Good morning or afternoon class. Uh, today's lesson is on efficiency. Efficiency is something that you're all familiar with in, in one way or another. It's just a comparison of how much you put in to compare to how much comes out. And so we can use efficiency uh, across any sort of thing that you can measure, be it uh, what we're doing, which is work and energy and power. Or you can use efficiency across anything where you are putting stuff in and getting stuff out. You can do it according to like efficiency of crop growing. You can do it efficiency of investments. You can do it as efficiency of time of studying and the effective output in terms of learning. The concept of efficiency is not specific to physics. It's it's everywhere but we really still like using it because it's valuable for comparisons it's the ultimate application base so what is efficiency and why do we care is because there's no such thing as a perfect machine or an object that does work in the universe that does it perfectly as intended there's always some air quote loss of energy into unintended forms of energy usually it's thermal uh, friction is usually the number one cause of turning whatever useful work energy into a useless heat energy. Um, so it's not that energy is lost so much as energy is turned into a form that we didn't want. Um, the measure of how much energy is input and used appropriately is the efficiency. And so we're going to be comparing how much energy or power is put into a system versus how much energy comes out of that system. So we have an input into the system and an output of the system and efficiency is that comparative uh, value. Since efficiency is the comparative value, there is no unit. It's, it's energy divided by energy. Joules divided by joules cancel out. No unit. Some people would say percent, but percent isn't unit. It is percent per, for those of you who remember your French, cent per hundred that's not a unit that's just saying it's an out of a hundred so what's really important for us is determining what are the outputs and what are the inputs what are outputs and inputs well let's let's take a look outputs are what happens to the system it's the result this is what happens as whatever happen as whatever things happen to the system so if something changes its height that change in height is an output in the form of changing potential energy or a change in velocity is an output in terms of form of change in kinetic energy. Or changes in temperature are outputs in the form of changing thermal energy. Notice height, velocity, temperature, these are all things that happen to the, to the system. These are the things that are physical observable results. This thing went that high. This thing's going this fast. This thing is now this temperature. These are all results of something that happens. These are measurable. So the observable measurable results are your outputs. The inputs is how much work or how much effort is put into making it go. If I'm pushing really hard with an applied force, that is how much I'm putting in. If I have a motor and I'm running it at a certain amount of energy or I'm running it at a certain particular power to make things go, that is the thing that's trying to make it happen. That's an input. So when you're reading a problem, if you see a change in height, a change in velocity, or a change in temperature, that is an output situation. And the thing that's trying to make it go, motors, hot plates, people pushing things, those are inputs because that's, that's making it try. That's the try side. Trying is input. What happens is output. So here's our, our formulas. Um, the efficiency is the power output over the power input, or the work output over the work input. Or in shorter forms, I do it pout over pin, P out over P in, or wout over win, work out over work in. Um, these are our efficiencies here. Um, here's a little quick check. If your efficiency is ever greater than 100%, you, you put them in the wrong spot. You should never, you should never have efficiency greater than 100%. That's crazy. So let's do a few examples. 
here's here's a first example here. Uh, we have a 4,000 watt crane that's lifting a 20 kilogram crate up 100 meters in 22 seconds. How efficient is the crane? Well, if I, I just if I just made a little visualization, it starts out here on the ground. I'll call it the ground H0, and it comes up there to the end. That's up. That's uh, height zero. Now I all so I'm seeing it's changing its height. And changing its height is my thing, like changing height is changing potential energy. So that's kind of in my mind. And when I'm reading the question, I see a 4,000 watt crane. Watts are power. So I'm going to use the power version of my efficiency formula. So I have my P out over P in. And I said that my output should be the changing in height, right? Changing in height is changing potential energy. So here's my formula. Potential energy final minus potential energy initial. Um, Oh, I realize I ended up making a mistake. Here we go. I fixed it up a little bit here, though not entirely. Um, it should be potential energy final over time minus potential energy initial over time. So put that, because we're dealing with power. Power is potential over time, is energy over time. So here we go. I have my power. Um, change in potential energy over time, I've got that over my power input. My outputs, change in height, is mgh, so 20 times 9.8 times 100 over the time, minus the initial 20 times 9.8 over zero, or times zero over 22 over our time. And that's all over the power input. That 4,000 watt is the crane, because the crane is trying to lift this crate, right? So that's why that's the input. So we punch it in there, beep, boop, boop. We get a number of 0 0.223. Now 0 0.223 is just 22.3%. Remember, whenever we're doing things in our calculators, all of our percents need to turn into decimal values. Percents, as like a percent, isn't actually meaningful. You can just treat it as a decimal value, and that's perfectly acceptable. Uh, so the answer of 0.223 or 22.3 are equivalent. You can leave either one as your final answer. Hopefully that makes sense. Sorry about the little mistakes in there. Let's try another one. I'm pretty sure I didn't mis make mistakes in this one. A 74% efficient hot plate has a rating of 1,000 watts. How long will it take to heat 250 grams of water up 5 Kelvin? So we're heating one cup of water 5 Kelvin. And uh, the hot plate of a thousand watts is pretty standard. So thermal energy is the thing that's changing. So that's going to be my output change in thermal energy. And since it's a thousand watts, means I'm using my power formula again. So here we go. My efficiency is power output over power input. And my output is my changing thermal energy. So it's Q over time. Q, remember, being uh, thermal energy. And that's divided by the power input. Now the thing I want is I want to have the time, and you're like, oh, the time, it's in the middle of this. How am I supposed to find it? Well, let's, let's just show the algebra. I don't like time that is being a fraction of a fraction, perhaps. So I'm going to multiply the input power up to the other side. And now time is in the denominator. You should never leave the variable you're looking for in the denominator. So I'm going to multiply it up to the other side. I have time is efficiency times power now is equal to Q and I can divide by the efficiency times power to both sides. Time is equal to Q, heat over the efficiency times the power. Now that's good, my algebra is complete, I can start plugging in my numbers. So here we go, T is Q over efficiency times power. Remember Q, heat formula is MC delta T. The mass, 0 0.250, remember 250 grams, Everything needs to be in kilograms, so that's why that 250 grams turns into 0 0.250. The specific heat capacity of water is 4180. If you don't remember that, you can check it up in your notes. And delta T is the change in temperature. We're heating it up 5 Kelvin. I didn't say it's getting to 5 Kelvin. I just said it's heating up 5 Kelvin in total. So that's fine. The efficiency, 74%. Notice how I put, whenever I'm using my calculations for efficiency, in my formula, my percent is always in decimal form, so that's why it's 0.74. Multiplied by the input power, that's the hot plate, 1,000. Crunch that into your calculator. It takes about 7 seconds.
Example three, let's take a gander at what's going on here. A mover is pushing a box up a ramp into a truck using 150 newton force, and the box is 50 kilograms. Determine the efficiency of the ramp. Well, this one is a little tricky because I didn't tell you what energies or works we're dealing with. So we kind of have to scratch our head and look at this situation. I'm like, okay, if I have a ramp, box starts at the bottom, box ends at the top, what do we have? Well, we have a force pushing it, and the force pushes it 12 meters. So we could get work, energy, change in energy, from, from applying a force, force times distance. But there's also box starts at bottom, box starts ends at top. That's a change in potential energy. So I have two works, work from applying a force and work from changing the potential energy. I can go ahead and punch these numbers in. So applying the force is 150 newtons times those 12 meters, because that'd be parallel to the force there, that's the distance parallel, so that's 1800 joules. And the work from changing the potential energy would be the change of potential energy, mgh final minus mgh initial, so 50 times 9.8 times 3, or minus 50 times 9.8 times uh, 0, 1470 joules. Now it's a matter of saying like, alright, time to put this into my efficiency formula. I have my output work over my input work. Hmm. Which one's which? And now, nobody said anything because you're watching a video. Also, you wouldn't say anything even if I was there because, let's be honest, you guys are not very good at talking sometimes. Or rather, not very good at talking about things that we're doing in class sometimes. But, let's just say, for example, you have an idea. I'm going to ignore it entirely. Let's give, for example, oh, you know what, I'm going to say the uh, work from applying the force is my output, and the work from changing my potential energy is my input. Punch it in there, 1800 over 1470, and I get 1.22. 1.22 is 122%. Uh-oh, I'm not allowed to have an efficiency of greater than 100%. It means that while I did this work, I clearly chose the wrong ones to be in the wrong place. Is this everything is terrible and I should, you know, give up? Probably not. It's not that big of a deal because you just flip them. See? Work potential over workforce now flips it around 0.8 to 82% efficient. That's the correct answer. The, the whole point of me going through that is to say, like, hey, if you make a mistake, use that quick check. Your efficiency can never be over 100%. And if it is, then that means you just flip them and you'll be fine. That's it. Practice the, uh, the efficiency problems on the worksheet and I'll see you tomorrow.